Talk to Ben's Machines. Today I'm working on my Swisher 60 inch tow mower. Let me show you what I have to do today. So here it is. This is this is the Swisher 60 inch tow behind mower. I use it on my property and uh, let me show you right down here what the, the model number of my unit is. It's model number T14560A made by Swisher in the United States. The job I'm going to do today is to replace the two belts. So there's a drive belt and then there's a, a um, blade belt. So let me show you a diagram on my computer to explain what I'm going to do. What I need to do is to replace the short belt. So the short belt is 6046 and that that is a belt that drives the main pulley. Um, so the short belt is number 6046 and I'm also going to change the long belt and that's shown here 5048 and here they are right here. So here's my short belt. So like the diagram shows, this is 6046. This is a Swisher, an authentic Swisher or an OEM part. Here's the long belt right here. Um, here's some other items. I'm going to take this opportunity to replace the three blades. So these are the, the blades I'm going to use. I bought these, or I bought this whole kit on Amazon. So in the kit that I got, I, I received the six bolts and nuts for the blades, as well as these three, these bolts here, and washers that go in the center of the blades. Over here, what I'd like to just uh, start off with is the, the tools I'm going to use for this, this repair job. I'm going to use a Sharpie. I'm going to use, use a 9 16 wrench. You'll need two half inch wrenches. I'm going to use my scraper to clean out underneath the deck. I have a, my container of uh, anti seize, a little bit of loose nut. You'll need a, a 5 16 uh, socket or wrench. And I also recommend maybe the use of an impact with a 9 16 socket and that's to take off the, the blades from underneath. The first thing that I've done that I didn't show on camera was the removal of the, the guards. So my, this particular unit uses two of these plastic guards and they're held in place with four brackets. So if you take your, if you take your, your 5 16 uh, either socket or ratchet or impact you just you'll use that to remove the like the, the four bolts here with these little holding clamps to remove the the side panels so once once you've get that done then you can expose the inside of of the mower deck so for security or for safety what I'm going to do is just remove the spark plug boot. So I'll just take that off so the engine doesn't start on us. And, um, you know, this, this is a how-to video how I'm going to go about replacing the belt. So this is my version of it. So I'll start off by removing the spark plug boot. And I'll come down here. And what I, what I want to start off by doing is I want to replace the, the long belt. The short belt, the short belt was already burnt and I damaged it and I've already removed it. So you won't see the removal of that because the belt is actually gone. But I'm going to take this opportunity to replace the long belt. So in order to do that, what I want to do or what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just loosen this tensioner, this pulley, which, which tensions the long belt. So uh, I will unscrew the tensioner in order to get enough slack in the belt to take it off. So in order to do that, I'm going to need a 9 16 wrench to, to loosen this off. So there's two things I can do here. Uh, when I, whenever I go and I 
replace the belt and I put the tensioner bolt back in place. I don't want to over tension or under tension the belt. So I'm just going to use my, mark, my Sharpie to mark the location on the thread where, where the nuts are in place. And I'll just use my tape measure here just to get a, an approximate idea of how much of the bolt is sticking out here. And it looks like it's, it's a, it's a half an inch strong. So I'll make sure that that gets bit, that gets put back in place more or less in the same place. Now I'll use my half inch, my half inch drill and I'll try to we'll get this nut off of here. So as you can see, the tension came completely off and now we should be easily able to remove the belt now. Okay, so here you go. Here's the old belt. So we'll put that aside and we'll grab the new belt and then get it in place. So what I'll do first is that I will I will set the belt over onto this pulley over here. So I have that one in place. The belt comes across, or it comes, it, it goes in front of these bolts here. There's a bolt here, and then there's a bolt here. So I'm gonna, I'm going to spool this around this pulley next. Like that. Now what I'll do is I'll, I'll fish this end of the of the belt over to the front the front spindle and to do that you have to go and get the belt over top of the front spindle so you just just gingerly kind of feed that feed that on top Okay, get it on the, get it on the pulley and then pull this over and this and then make sure this is the only, so this is the idler, the tensioner pulley. This is the only pulley where the belt is riding on the back side of the belt. All the other locations. The, the belt is, is, is rotating inside the pulley on the inner part of the belt. So make sure that you have your belt in the right orientation. Okay, so as you can see, once you have the, the tensioner bolt removed, it's quite straightforward in order to get the pulley back in place. So now, as you see, as I, as I pull on the tensioner, the belt, is, the belt is right where I want it to be. So if I put this back in like this, and I just flung the nut there, you can see that everything is... Oh, I just realized, let me make sure that the belt is in the pulley over here. Okay, there you go. Let's put the tensioner back in place so that we run less chance. Now this is this is quite the challenge here. If I take the belt off here, then I can get the tensioner more or less installed here just i'd like i'll put this in just so it's 
there's one or two threads grabbing this bolt. And now I'll, I'll just use strength here. Remove the tension off the tensioner. Hopefully enough that I can get the belt on. Okay. Okay, so as you can see, I just used my palm and I pulled, I pushed on the I pushed on the tensioner just to take take the tension off the belt just enough that I could get the belt onto this pulley and then as I let it off you can see now that that the belt is in its spot it rotates freely make sure that these belt this belt is running or the belt is located on this side of the bolt. Okay, here's the other one. Make sure that the belt is on is on this side of this bolt. Otherwise, if it's on this side, it will rub and it will prematurely wear out your belt. Okay, so the same on this side. Make sure the belt is on this side of this bolt. All right. So I never I never turned this set nut so technically if I just if I just tighten this this nut with the nylon washer that should put the tension right back to what it was when we started so I'll use my impact I get my half inch wrench and I'll just hold this nut here just just in case and then I'll I'll bring this back in There you have it. I'll use my measuring tape and I'll just verify to see. Yeah, that's exactly right. So it's, it's just a shade longer than a half an inch. So I'm satisfied with this. You don't, I guess the challenge here folks is that you don't want, you don't want to have too much tension. Otherwise, you'll prematurely wear out the belt. And the opposite is true. So if you don't have enough tension on the belt, the belt will slip, um, will slip on the pulleys. The slippage will, will create heat and the belt will, will wear out faster. So you really need to get the tension right about in the middle. So not too tight and not too loose. So for your records or for, for your information, I from I have about a half an inch of this of this bolt protruding from this plate. Or another another perhaps another measurement you could use is the deflection, the overall deflection of the spring is five inches, five and three eighths. Okay, so now the next step is the installation of the short belt. The short belt is part number 6046. And you can see the orientation or the belt configuration from the owner's manual. What we want to be prepared for for this job is there are, there are belt guides underneath the engine, okay? So the belt guide is basically just a piece of wire belt bent in the shape of a U. And what that is, what that serves is that that keeps the belt running within, within the dimension of that, that bent wire in the shape of a U. There are two such uh, belt guides underneath this machine. There's one at the front and there's one at the rear. The one at the front we should, I should be able to just insert the belt in between the belt guide and around the front pulley. But it becomes a bit of a challenge with the rear. So what I'm gonna do, the nice thing about these machines is that the two engine bolts 
here are actually the bolts that are used to keep those guides in place. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to loosen the engine bolt. So in order for me to get access to that, you need to, you need to get this connector out of the way. So I'll just release that. And then as you can see here, I have my ground strap and then there's the bolt. So I'm going to take my half inch wrench and I'm going to remove this nut, remove, remove the negative terminal strap, just move that over to the side. And then I need to loosen this nut here. And what this is going to allow me to do is to lower the belt guide in order for me to get the belt in place. In fact, what I'll do here is I'm, I'm just going to maybe lower one side. Okay, so I'll do the same for the other side. So I'll take my half inch wrench and I'm going to loosen this engine bolt here. As you can see, I've already pre-loosened pre this bolt. So I'm just going to loosen it off so that the, the, uh, the, the belt guide drops down. This is an engine bolt. So this bolt, this bolt is coming up through the frame. It supports one side of the belt guide and then it also acts as one of the four bolts that, that keep the engine down. So we'll put that there. All right, so now let's begin inserting this. I don't know if there's a if there's a perfect way for you for the viewers to be able to see how to get this in place, but you know maybe maybe you can try to get a camera view from the side to see what's going on in there. So, or you'll just get a really good back view of my head and the process. I just don't know. What I'm going to do is I'm going to work from the gas tank side because it looks like there's less things in the way here. Okay, so I'm taking the belt like this with my hand and the very first thing I'm, I want to do is I want to I want to pass the belt through the front the front belt guide which is right here. I'm going to take the belt I'm going to put it into the belt guide and then move it over onto the front pulley. Okay, and I've, I've done that. So, I have the belt passed inside the, the belt guide, which is right here. So the belt guide has a bolt on this side and it has a bolt on the other side. So it, it's ma it makes a U shape. So you have to get your belt in between this belt guide and then you have to wrap it around the pulley. The pulley and you go in from the top. So you take your belt and you run it over top of the pulley and you get it into the groove. Okay, now I have to get this end. Obviously the, the belt, one side of the belt runs across the idler pulley right here which I'm I'm spinning with my finger so that goes like that and now I have to get the belt here's a good view of the other of the other belt guide right here I have here's here's the bottom of the belt guide right here the engine bolt is out so the the belt guide is dropping down I then take the belt I go in between the belt guide underneath and then go under under the engine pulley which is right here or the where the engine is and now i have to get the belt onto the engine pulley remove the tension on your your uh, engine pulley and that will that will definitely help you do this Okay, and then I'll, I'll rotate the motor by hand. I should be able to get... I 
So what, what I'm doing now is I'm just working to get the, the belt onto the engine pulley. And there you go, I have it on. So now, let me get my hand out of the way. So as you can see, the belt is here. The belt is on the engine pulley. Here's, here's that belt guide right here. I see that there's some leftover belt on here. See this? That's the leftover of the previous belt. Actually, before I, I put this back on, I'm just gonna put a little bit of anti-seize paste on there. So look at this, I'll take, I'll take my engine bolt here, I'll put some anti-seize paste and then reinsert this bolt. Put, your, put my finger back on there and just push that up. Okay, and then I'll, I'll put some anti-seize on this bolt. And what I have to do now is get this bolt, fish this bolt, through, through, through the loop or the belt guide and then push, push the bolt back up through the base into the engine. So I'll use my half inch wrench. Make sure you get this not tight because it's acting as a an engine support bolt as well and then it's always important using a trouble light or an extension light go underneath and just go and do a visual check to make sure that the belt is in place before you go any further so i'll do that right now yep the belt is in place the tensioner works and I have the pulley in the right position so I'm satisfied that I have the belt in the right spot so I have this nut tight, tightened down don't forget to reattach your negative battery terminal okay and then get this get this strap bolted in place okay and then reattach the contact wait for the click make sure that it's fully engaged that's good okay so there you have it we just you just saw me install the two belts onto this machine so I, I showed I showed everyone how I did it and and the steps that I took you you could follow along perfectly with that or you could do a variation of that or something completely different I'll leave that up to you so I'm really satisfied with how that looks and the next thing I'm going to do now is I want let's let's replace the the blades underneath so what I'm going to do for that is I'm just going to use my lift and I'm gonna attach a nylon rope and I'm gonna I'm gonna lift the deck up from this point right here. So this, this step of the job is to remove the three blades and then use a scraper and I'm going to clean up underneath the deck just while I'm underneath there just to make sure things, there's no, there's no uh, huge buildup of grass. Once I'm satisfied with that then I'll, we'll reinstall the blades. Okay so now to do this job I find it really handy to use my impact with my 916th, with a 916th socket. 
All right, so there's three blades. One, two, three. We're gonna replace those blades. So what, I, what I'm gonna do is, wow, the, we're getting a, a rainstorm here. So you might hear rain, rain as a background noise. So let's, I'll take out, I'll take off the two, the two outer bolts and then I'll take off the center bolt. And by the way, I have already, in preparation for this video, I've already gone in and, and loosened the bolts already. So in order to do this, you'll need your 916 wrench. Set it up in behind because there's a nut on the back side. And then use your impact wrench. Okay, and then remove the nut, the bolt. Okay, and this is the length, this is the length of bolt you're taking off. And you have a, well, a 916 nut on the inside here. Push that out. Okay, so you do that twice. So I'll do the back one here. Same process. Okay, same bolt and the same nut. All right, now the center bolt. It's, it's, um, it's, not, it's, it's not reverse thread, which means you have to turn, you have to turn counterclockwise to remove it. And there it is, off it comes. The blade is off and this is the size of the bolt and there's a very thick thick washer and this is what you're left with this is the the bottom side of the spindle there you go so now I'll, I'll repeat this process two more times and I'll remove the two other blades So after that dirty job, I just would like every I'd like you to see what it looks like when it's all clean underneath. After washing myself off after that job, let's go back to the desk. So here are the blades that I'm installing. They came with the kit with this hardware. So the first thing I'll do is I'll go and install the the center bolts for each blade and then I'll go in after and I'll install the other two bolts. So I'll grab my hardware and my my anti-seize paste and we'll start getting these installed. Let's do it. Put a little bit of anti-seize on the threads. Insert cone up. So that means blades have to go in this position. And then just get the nut, or sorry, get the bolt installed like that. Next thing I'll do is I'll grab the remaining six bolts and nuts and make sure I have a 916 wrench. Now we reinstall. So I've got my impact, my 916 wrench. I'll tighten the two outside bolts and I'll finish off by tightening the middle bolt, the center bolt.
I will demonstrate. So I'll get my wrench in position and snug it up. And then this side, this this bolt. this one and this one and then finish with the middle one there you go that's it so just use common sense when you when you tighten these don't over tighten them with the impact and then what I'll do is I'll repeat this process for the two outer blades. All right, so the, the three blades are installed. All the nuts and bolts are tightened down. I don't have the torque specs, but just use common sense. I guess just before we put the machine down and we, we wrap things up, I just wanna give a quick tip that I would recommend that the outer blades, the position of the blades you, you look at that or you, you, you keep that in mind for your own project. So if you keep the center blade uh, in line with the deck in this position and you have the other two outer blades 90 degrees from the center blade, that would create, I think, the most optimum, optimum position or the optimum condition for your machine. That way, so I've read or so I've, I've I've, I've heard it, it actually allows for the grass to exit the deck in the most efficient and quickest way possible. So I would set things up like this if, uh, if you decide to undertake such a, a project. Okay, so now let's go ahead and put the deck down and we'll get the, uh, the belt guards installed and then we'll be done. installing the, the belt covers. See, so they essentially just slide in here like this. Just make sure your these clips are in the right place. There should be four of them. Let's just slide this in like this. Just put that in there like that. And then, so now I have my 516 socket and I, got, I have four clips and they, they go on, whoops. They basically, you take the clip, you put it into these, in, in there like that and you just screw this in. So I'll, I will put them all in. I'll put them all in loose first and then I'll snug them up after once all of them are in place. And then I'll just finish by tightening them all up. So now I'll repeat the process on the other side. Okay, so now we, I now have the, the two belt covers in place. The last thing I have to do is just reinstall or plug my spark plug boot back in place. Boom. Because I had the toe behind mower 
up on a 45 or 30 degree angle when I was working underneath on the, the blades. And now I have the machine down. I'm just gonna let the engine be horizontal for a while before I start it up, just to make 100% sure that the engine, the engine oil has basically settled to the bottom before I start it up. Last thing I wanna do is do any damage to the, the engine. So essentially, that's it. As you saw, it was quite a straightforward uh, repair or a straightforward maintenance activity. I hope that this you found this video helpful and maybe it, you could use this you know to help help your your uh, upcoming project so that's the end of this one just follow me through the garage and I'll give you a sneak peek of what to expect in, in a future video as I've just got another project so follow me come on keep following me through the garage That's it for now. I hope you enjoyed our video. Stay tuned for the next one. Until then, bye now.